micro-credentials have become such a hot topic. You know. Suddenly the digital world is giving people entirely new opportunities and ownership over what they learn and how they learn and when they learn and where they learn. But then that also raises the question, how do we recognize and certify such learning? And that's where micro-credentials come in. So it's not surprising that more and more educational institutions and other content providers are now offering tools like micro-credentials. And of course, many governments turn to micro-credentials during the pandemic you know, as a way to quickly reorient, reskill workers. You know to avoid that these people have to go back to the queue, go through a long winded course and then get another degree, but rather find ways to recognize the skills they have and then let them deploy them where those skills are most needed. So micro-credentials offer great promise or support lifelong learning where they are properly designed. Of course, that's important. They give people means to continue to learn and to upskill anytime throughout their lives. They provide a way for higher education institutions and other content providers to respond much more flexibly and rapidly to emerging learner interests and needs and also to level market needs. But you know, if you just let a thousand flowers bloom, you very quickly get into fragmentation and to proliferation of micro-credentials and of frameworks that just don't talk to each other. And that then severely limits the meaning and value of micro-credentials for individuals, but also the capacity of employers and higher education systems to see through them and recognize the relevance and value of such micro-credentials. The answer to that is to create the largest islands of trust that we can possibly put together, and then to gradually expand those islands, and of course also to work to make them interoperable. Micro-credentials also need to be designed with inclusion at the heart, not bolted on. There are many creative ways that micro-credentials can be used to support students making the transition from school to higher education or to work and to help keep them moving forward towards completion once they get there. You know. And finally, many learners need help to navigate this jungle to discover and choose between the growing number of programs on offer and to figure out their value and what best matches their interests and their abilities. And, and that requires governments to take the lead on initiatives such as learner information portals. So lots of things, things to talk about at this webinar and we're going to get great input today from our guest speakers from Spain on quality assurance for micro-credentials, from Denmark on collaboration between higher education institutions and the industry around the development of micro-credential programs and from the United States and how to see that micro-credentials really provide equitable learning opportunities 